Hello. Uh, I hope that this week has been a good week for you uh, and that you're all keeping well wherever you're joining us from today. As we now enter the final few weeks before the US presidential election, I seem to be getting more and more choice recommendations when browsing on the internet. A t-shirt printed with Jesus Votes Republican, and on the same day recently, a book titled Why Christians Can't Be Democrats were two that especially stand out. But notwithstanding the fact that I don't actually have a vote in the upcoming polls, these were just a small selection of the goods and online articles suggested to me that went into great detail as to why Joe Biden or Donald Trump is the closest thing to Jesus that America could get, and therefore why it is every good Christian's duty to go out and vote for them. Now, I am not going to enter that bun fight, but what I will say is that that discussion fits perfectly with the gospel reading from Matthew set for today. The closing phrase in that reading, in its traditional translation, render unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, has now become part of the popular lexicon, meaning that we need to consider our loyalties, and especially how much we should follow or give to our secular world, and how much to our faith to God. You can perhaps see now why this reading is often used to explain to congregations why they need to give more in the collection box. But you ask, how does this fit in with the elections? Well, if you have had the chance to read the Christian press lately, you would have found many angles suggesting where a true Christian would ally themselves in the race to the White House. One commentator I read said, I believe it is my duty to God to help protect this nation from the Democrats. Another wrote, I just can't see how a Christian can be Republican. A third put it that I won't vote. I can't see how voting can in any way honour God. So I just don't bother. And one more said, I believe it is my Christian responsibility to vote. I try to vote as intelligently as I can. But frequently, it means choosing between the lesser of two evils. I think today's passage is not telling us how to vote, although maybe it is. But it is telling us that we need to consider how we use our lives and how we use our votes in this world as we try to serve and please a God who is not of this world. Now I'm guessing that most of us will try our best to get some kind of balance in things like this. We try to honour God with our lives and at the same time we try to be good decent citizens of our country. And of course, that they are not always the same things. And that equilibrium is not always easy to maintain. In fact, sometimes it is downright complicated. But what we need to do is not complicated at all. And that is what Jesus said in a roundabout sort of way in today's Gospel. Let's look at the story again. The naughty Pharisees would on their mission to try and trap Jesus by offering him a situation he could not win. They asked whether it was lawful to pay the census tax to the emperor or not. The conundrum here being that if Jesus answered yes, people should pay the tax, then he could be perceived as being in collusion 
with Rome, supporting and justifying the occupation and the oppression of the Jews. Nasty. That would not make him popular with the Jewish people. But on the other hand, if he says, no, we should not pay tax, he could be suspected of revolutionary sentiment against Rome. Tricky. But Jesus knows what the Pharisees are up to. So when he answers, he asks them to identify whose image is on the coin, the tribute coin that they would use to pay the tax. And when they correctly identify the face of the emperor and his title, Jesus responds with this very well-known but rather ambiguous one-liner. Give the emperor what belongs to him and give to God what belongs to God. And we're told that the Pharisees walked away surprised. Maybe because they needed to think about what that really meant. But probably because they realised the extent of what Jesus had just said. And those words, profound as they are, are words by which we too should live our lives. They are important because that sentiment reminds us of our ultimate citizenship. Now throughout the Bible, Jesus makes many references to the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. We say that we believe in that in our liturgy and we pray for that kingdom to come every week. We want to be part of that kingdom. And here in this reading, Jesus says clearly that although our passport may be of the UK or Japan or some other place, Ultimately, our true and our permanent citizenship is not with any country, but in the kingdom of God. This reading is all about allegiance. We talk about the kingdom of God, we pray about it, we are part of it. Taxes should be paid, Jesus says because the emperor's image and inscription on the coin means that it falls under the things that belong to the emperor. But who does the emperor belong to is the bigger question. And that's what Jesus wanted us to think about today. And we all know the answer. So the real point that we need to take away from this is not how much we should pledge to the church or put in the collection tray each week, or even how much of our lives we should give to God, but rather a recognition and an appreciation and an acceptance of how much already actually belongs to God. And the answer is everything. Now, when we hear this passage and we think about issues of allegiance, it's probably easy for us to see how that issue affects us each day. Because the lives we live in are so confusing and so complicated and so complex that they pull us in many different directions. Materialism and consumerism and a host of other isms compete for our attention and our energy and our money and our time and our love. And today, Jesus reminds us simply that while coins with Caesar's image may belong to him, coins, Caesar, Rome, the world, and everything in it belongs to God. We too, in the midst of this world that is so complex, we too belong to God. And we need to remember that when we choose to do something or say something, or be something. And as we try to navigate our way 
through this world that is full of minefields trying to trip us up, we would do well to pray for God's wisdom, for his discernment and his inspiration as we seek to follow Jesus, as we seek to be good members of his kingdom amidst the many distractions and challenges, political and otherwise, that we face daily. So when it comes to Tuesday the 3rd of November, a few weeks away, we hope that those who are eligible will vote following their conscience and following their belief. We trust that they will feel their ultimate allegiance beyond any party is to God, the creator of all that is. And thus they will be informed by the Holy Spirit as they make their choice for the good of God's world. And for the rest of us who don't have a vote, we do have a duty. We have a duty to pray for those who will vote. We have a duty to pray for that nation and for its elected leaders. And one good thing we can all be confident of is that Republican or Democrat or Independent, we all belong to God. And although we may at times feel torn as we live as citizens of this world, we can be sure that in Jesus' kingdom, we have all the support and the encouragement and the comforting that we need. And we also have a leader who will never let us down. Shall we pray? Loving Heavenly Father, thank you for calling us to your kingdom. Help us to follow you with our hearts and minds and lives, that all in this world may know you and your goodness. As our Saviour and Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen.